No. Mm -mm. No. Okay, so Morris puts out three rapid and quick albums, back to back to back. Ever since they broke up, or kind of broke up after their guitarist left the band. Yeah, the primary songwriter left, I believe, right? Right. Yeah. And so nobody really knew where the band was going to go at that point. Uh, they started off writing these really rapid, quick, Gothenburg-influenced songs. Uh, as far as Mellow Death was concerned, there wasn't anybody that was doing the justice for these riffs. Um, really, there wasn't anything quite like it at the time. So we got In Death Said Live and we got Dawn of a Fifth Era. Now, In Death Said Live was a personal favorite of mine. I actually enjoyed that quite a bit. Maybe not as much as The Unborn, but it was still a very good album. Uh, now, Dawn of a Fifth Era, I felt, while it had its highs, it had some really deep fucking lows. And I just, I didn't like it as much as that one. Um, so here we are with the third release in, in this very short period of time. Um, Embers of a Dying World is the name of this one here. And uh, really we've got quite a few really good songs with some really varied instrumentation as well as tempos. But there are some deep lows that are very similar to their last work. Yeah, I feel like there isn't a lot of consistency going on throughout the album, which is a real disappointment to me because I always found them to be fairly consistent for a Mellow Death band. Yeah. A lot of Mellow Death tends to run together and sound very samey, and even on a lot of classic albums like The Jester Race or uh, Dark and Cody's The Gallery, oh, yeah. I only like maybe three, four of the songs, and then I skip the rest generally, after I listen to it initially, of course. But... For the most part, on their first few albums, the first four, I'd say, you could listen to the whole album and you wouldn't really want to skip it because the songs, while they retained the band's sound the entire time, they all sounded different enough and they were always nice and varied, but they, they were on the speedier side because I think they did speedier well, oh, at least yeah. as far as they went early on. Yeah, they were a band that was kind of like soil work, where they always kind of moved forward at a really quick pace. There were bands like Dark Tranquility who could slow it down, even Insomnium towards their later era. Oh, yeah. um, they could build on these really monumental, epic, kind of slow-scale songs. Um, but yeah, they, they really delivered with these quick and punchy ones, Moore's did. And that was what was so interesting about them. But now they kind of add a little bit of tempo change, mm -hmm. variation, and it does pay off in spots, but it also does not. There are songs that just don't feel quite as evolved as they really need to be. Um, funny enough, the, the first two tracks, including the intro, three tracks, actually just kind of feel dated. Those are the biggest issues with this scene yeah. entirely. To me, they sound like B-sides of off of the previous album, again, yeah. which I know you weren't the biggest fan of the previous album, but... Personally, I think the previous album did the faster songs better, and these songs just sound like, they sound uninspired, and generally Moore has always sound really inspired, and they just kind of run together to me. Yeah. Between, like, a lot of the times with songs on the same album and the previous two albums, like, it, I just feel like they could have been left off, and the album would have been better without the first two or three tracks. Yeah, I, I really like the intro to the CD, yeah. but I don't feel like it leads into anything that is really worth a shit. At the end of the day, it just sounds like Moore is doing essentially the same thing they've always done, but to a lesser extent. If I yeah. had to take the songs on this CD and rank them with the best songs that they've ever made, or with any song they've ever made, the first two tracks on this would be some of the worst songs I think I've ever heard them make. It's really not until we get to Into the Night, which I feel like they start to slowly redeem themselves. That's got this really loud and roaring chorus in the main riff, the ho, 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 ho. And, and it's, it's just, it's, it's everything that I really enjoy about them. It's got this really epic overtone to it, but it's also got these razor sharp riffs, these really noodly, but also just accented riffs. They're very solid. But then, of course, we get into... Death is the beginning is the track after that. Yes! That's track five, and Wonderful. for me, 
weirdly, like like I was saying earlier, I generally preferred their faster songs, their speedier numbers, but that song is mid to slow paced, but it has so many influences going on throughout. It has female vocals, it has synth violin in the middle, a, an amazing synth outro. A great solo. A fantastic solo. Love the solo. And man. I feel like when they slow down, if they could make tracks like that consistently, they would be, they could be a, an amazing death doom band, I would oh, yeah. say. They, yeah, they're really interesting when they start slowing down their tempos or just varying at all. And that, that's the biggest thing about this album is that it adds in a lot of different experimental elements to their sound. And I say experimental in the sense that they do anything slightly different. Because with a lot of mellow death, you get these really samey tempoed songs it's, back to back to back. A lot right. Of the time. But really here you've got a lot of different songs that really vary it and, and Death is the beginning is probably one of the best songs they've ever written. My only complaint I, I have to mention this because it, it just bothers me just a tiny bit. There's a portion of the song where it's got this very clean break to it, but you've still got the death metal growls kind of doing this like really impassioned and like really emotional. <laughs> There's just this like acoustic and very like quiet break to it, but otherwise it's phenomenal. It's literally one small part, um, but yeah, it's it's a wonderful track and everything after that it is actually a lot better quality than what came before it. I'd say for the most part I agree with you. The Ghost After It's also a fantastic song. Awesome. Very black metal tinged. And In Torment Solid, I feel like it's a little uninspired. It's one of the faster songs on the album. There aren't a lot of fast songs, like we were saying. Yeah, it really does tone down the, the speed quality. It's generally mid-paced to slow-paced in a lot of places. And then after that, you get another instrumental interlude track. Well, not another interlude track. You only have the intro track, which is instrumental, and then you have this interlude track. Which does nothing for the CD. It really, yeah. Nothing. It doesn't really do anything. You could have left it off, cut a couple minutes off of the album. Right, right, right. That that was That's one of my personal issues with the CD. Eric doesn't have this problem, but I feel like the CD is just a little too long. And maybe that's consistency issues. You could really take, yeah. like he said, take off the first two tracks, and I feel like it would actually flow a lot better, too. It just needs its own kind of uh, organic intro to it. But uh, Yeah, so really, it's got a really great back half. You've got Death is the Beginning, you've got The Ghost, uh, you've got, of course, the last two tracks, which are really, really good. Yeah, Colors of the Cosmos, as far as the fast songs the album go, is the contender for the best song. For oh, me. yeah. It has a it's, great fucking name. Yeah. <laughs> and Apprentice of Death is another mid pace, slower pace song. It's so but heavy, though. That's I'm, really yeah. heavy. It's he Yeah, it's not a light ballad type song. They don't really do those. No. But it's absolutely fantastic, and I just hope in the future that if they go on this path of more atmospheric mid pace songs that they're able to keep the consistency up a bit because a lot of the other songs just they just even the other mid pace songs just don't hold up to those two songs no no they really don't the uh, death is the beginning and the premise of death just to clarify oh, pretty yeah. much if you put death in the title and it's a more principium song it seems to be pretty good right you seem to be in for a good time regardless <laughs> of anything else involved <laughs> so uh, yeah, overall, uh, not a bad album, a little inconsistent, uh, but more varied than their pre uh, past works. A um, lot going on here. First two tracks, first three tracks, including the uh, the intro. Get rid of them. You don't need them. Tune up, Fredder. Yeah. Just, just, just get rid of them. <laughs> Pretend they don't exist. Yeah. So, yeah. Just skip from Masquerade to Into the Dark. Right. And then you'll have a go good more Principium time. I should mention that the Japanese version has a cover of Livin' La Vida Loca, and... Most people aren't probably going to hear that or care to hear it because the whole goofy death metal cover thing, it, it doesn't do a lot for a lot of people, myself included, but it's really well done. It's actually pretty good. The solos are fantastic. Yeah, the solos are really good. It's got really, uh, it's got really even distribution with guitar and synth, and the synth is actually really good. Yep. The symphonic elements yep. actually strangely work on yeah. this dumbass song. Yeah. <laughs> God bless the band for putting a lot of work into something absolutely retarded. Uh, they're going the way of Calma, Children of Bodom, and Norther, and just putting an absolute buttload of potential into the uh, track that really nobody should care about at all. Um, but, I mean, Japan, there you go, guys. You get something that nobody else wanted nor cared about. So, congrats. That's a... Uh... I think I would probably give it a, a 6 out of 10. I would like to see more consistency and m more variation in tempo. 
Most of the songs are slow and mid-paced. It's and a little plodding in spots. Yeah, it yeah. plods in spots, especially the the front half. And I just feel like they should vary it up a bit more. The maybe the track listing could have been switched around a bit to make things a little more interesting in the long run. Yeah. But sitting through it was a little bit hard for me. I tended to lose focus, so I had to listen to it like seven or eight times to be able to have something cohesive, coherent to say about it. Same. So that said. I would go with a 6 out of 10. Yep. And I give it a 7 personally, so by our powers combined, I'd give it a 6.5. We give it a 6.5. There's a 6.5 there. There's 6s and there's 0.5s. So. You put them together, 6.5. Yep. yep. Or there's 65 if there's no six, decimal. 65 out of 100. 